What's up guys, James here with Fun Fact of the Day. Hope you guys are having a great day, learning lots, and getting stuff done. Today, we have a hilarious video about a man who used his will to play jokes on people. Have you ever wondered how you can mess with all of your friends as well as hundreds of random people and cause dozens of unnecessary baby births all after you died? Well, wonder no longer because there was actually a guy named Charles Vance Miller who did all of those things and if that sounds at all interesting to you, let's get into it. Charles Vance Miller was a lawyer with no family, so he did exactly what most lonely guys do. He became hilarious, and because of that, he had tons of great friends, and according to them, he was quite the practical jokester. One of the practical jokes he was known for back in the day, when, you know, he was alive, was he would place money on the ground and then go and hide and watch people clamor over it and fight each other for the money. Now, this Sounds horrible today, because obviously it is horrible, but back in the day when nobody cared about poor people, apparently it was hilarious. Anyways, like all great men do, he eventually decided to die of a heart attack at 72, and as you probably guessed from the title of this video, that was not the end of his jokes. You see, he was a lawyer, which meant that he could write one heck of a will, and he did just that. Over the years, he actually made quite a few good investments, so by the time he died, he was extremely wealthy. He had a lot of businesses and things that he needed to give away to various people, so he did it in the funniest possible ways. The first order of business was to give away his beautiful beach house in Jamaica. He had three friends, all of which who absolutely hated each other. They were their worst enemies, so naturally he decided to give equal ownership of that house to all three of them on the sole condition that they lived in it together indefinitely. Otherwise, it was sold off and given to the poor people of Jamaica. The next thing to give away was his portion of his brewery business. Now, this business was well known to be a Catholic owned business, which means that his business partners, the people who owned the rest of the business, were devout Catholics. And in case you didn't know, Catholics and Protestants at the time hated each other. They were sworn enemies. So naturally, he decided to break up his share of the business and give it equally to every single Protestant minister in the entire town that he lived in. 99 of them ended up receiving a portion of this, but it was conditional on the fact that they had to participate actively in the management, which meant interacting with the Catholic owners, and draw money from the business in order to receive their share. This guy Miller also owned a fair portion of a horse racing company in Toronto, Canada, and of course, while owning that company, he developed quite a few critics. In fact, he had two people in particular who actually devoted tons of their free time to advocate against horse racing, specifically at their racetrack. And then he had one customer who absolutely hated the racetrack, him and the entire horse racing industry, because he had had some bad times there. So naturally what he did was he gave the entire portion of his business to those three people equally on the condition that they actively participated in the horse racing company. Now, the two advocates ended up just giving away their shares to charity because that was the only other option if they didn't want to actively participate, of course, which they didn't. And then the third guy who hated the company actually ended up getting involved and he took his share gladly. And finally, for the ultimate joke, he had to figure out a way to get rid of the rest of his wealth, which was just cash and a small bit of land that he owned on the Canada-United States border. Fortunately, after he died, that small bit of land on the Canada-United States border ended up becoming the second largest Canada-US crossing and therefore accrued a ton of value when he sold it to the United States government. But all of that aside, he basically had $2.8 million cash in today's money to give away, which is a fair amount of money. So he had to think of something hilarious to do with it. Now you see, this guy, Miller, he was actually a massive birth control advocate. He, he believed that not nearly enough people were using the birth control that was available, especially when they weren't ready to have kids. So with that in mind, this is exactly how he set up the final portion of his will. 
He gave all of his money to one person and told that person to hold on to it for exactly 10 years. Then, after the 10 years were up, he was to give all of that money to the one woman who had the most children during that 10-year period. Basically, what ended up happening was tons of people found out about this, and of course there were many lawsuits and things that ensued, but none of them went through, really. And so, at the end of the 10 years, tons of random women had actually steamrolled through and tried to have as many children as they possibly could in that time. On top of that, there was even a woman who was so confident that she had had the most kids that in the last year, when she had her last kid, she actually named the kid Charles Vance Miller after the guy who she thought was going to make her a millionaire. But just to add to the joke, she of course ended up losing by one child, and eight people ended up tying. They all had nine kids in ten years, which is crazy. However, four of those people were disqualified because the judge who was in charge of this decision decided that anybody who had kids out of wedlock was disqualified. However, those people ended up winning a lawsuit against him later, and they each won $200,000. The other four women, who all each had nine children in those ten years, were given one-fourth of the money, and that whole fiasco ended up being called the Great Stork Derby. And that is the end of this guy's will. If you enjoyed this story and you'd like to write your own hilarious will, click the link right here and watch all my other videos. None of them have anything to do about how to write a funny will, but they are all funny and interesting. So check it out. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. I make new videos all the time and it would really help me out. Thank you very much, and I will see you soon.